What's up guys, it's Shermzy here and in this video I'm going to talk you through everything surrounding the subject and how to effectively manage your charge blade files, sword and shield for both SAED and Savage Axe playstyles and also share how I would typically play in both of these playstyles. I'm a charge blade speedrunner and this is part of my series of charge blade guides and speedrunner secrets. This guide will be intended for all levels of CV players including beginners, intermediate, advanced and even speedrunner level since this is a subject I'm still working on mastering because this skill requires planning your moves a few steps before it happens where to truly be effective you need to react quickly and optimally. Being competent at guard pointing and countering is very critical and this predominantly consists of a higher twitch reaction skill and lower decision making skill. Managing files effectively throughout a hunt is a combination of lower twitch reaction skill and more so your ability in planning your next few moves ahead which takes intelligence and quick decision making skill. If you want to avoid spending most of your game charging your shield, files and savage axe and instead do more DPS then this is the guide for you. Within this guide, I'll be starting off by sharing different combos to effectively charge your files, shield, and sword. Then explain how long does each possible charge state last for, where I'll start sharing some advice in how you can use this knowledge to start planning in your hunts more efficiently. Then run through the decoration skills that affects charging faster and maintaining your charges longer. Then comes the second half of the guide, which will be the greatest value of this guide in my opinion, which will be my advice on how to manage your files and everything else during every stage of the hunt for both SAD and Savage Axe playstyles. The aim of this guide is for you to be able to be in any scenario of the hunt and know what are the best options to consider when recharging your shield and files so you can better plan and react which will help you focus more on anticipating the monster's moves and doing more damage. I will finish off with a conclusion and there I'll share some of my personal learning techniques in how to further accelerate your learning in planning and managing your files, including all the charge states. Just for your convenience, I'll have timestamps in the description so you can refer to whatever section you need at your own luxury. Without further ado, it's time. Okay, first off, for both SAD or Savage Axe playstyle, I'll quickly run through my two favorite combos to quickly charge up your files and shield, which is the state you need to aim to be in at all times of the hunt, before you consider doing any real damage. In this entire guide, I'll be using Focus Level 3 in all my builds, which is a mandatory skill in my opinion, and I'll explain a little bit more why later. I will describe the combos in this video for both Xbox and PS4 controls and will have to apologize to PC players who use mouse and keyboard since I don't have experience in how this works for this game. But if somebody wants to share a translation in the comments to help your fellow PC players then I'm happy to share and promote that. The first combo is done by pressing Y, hold B, release, Y, RTB, YB, YB, RT, Hold B release, Y, RTB. Or for PS4, triangle, hold circle release, triangle, hold R2 circle, triangle circle, triangle circle, R2, hold circle release, triangle, hold R2 circle. A very important note for this method of combo to be efficient is to try to make sure every time you charge your files into your shield to position yourself so that the round slash you perform included in this combo after you charge your shield hits the monster or else you would need an additional Y or triangle attack before you can finally charge up your files in that combo. There are many different situations where a generic charging up combo like this one has to be modified for the given situation so don't focus too much on getting this exact combo down. You would typically use this combo when the monster is moving and fighting back since this combo prioritizes in getting your shield charged ASAP, thus allowing you to guard point and activate offensive guard as you further charge up your files and potentially avoid any large knockbacks from blocks. 
Clutch Claw is mandatory to tenderize the monster's part to deal significant more damage, and with the CB being a heavy weapon, it only takes one attempt to tenderize, and as a bonus, it contributes to charging your files, which is why it's a no-brainer for your CB players to tenderize. The second, and my favorite combo, is by pressing Y, hold B, release, Y, hold R, T, B, Y, hold B, release, Y, B, Y, B, hold R, T, tap B, hold Y, release. And for PS4, the triangle, hold circle, release, triangle, hold R2, circle, triangle, hold circle, release, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, hold R2, tap B, hold triangle, release. Again, the round slash strike as you charge your shield needs to hit the monster to make this combo effective. The final charge sword smash I performed there is completely optional and I'll explain the benefits of that very shortly. You would use this second combo typically when the monster is immobilized, since it's the fastest combo to get everything charged up. However, I would also use this combo whilst fighting the monster, if I feel I can get away with charging everything without the need of blocking or receiving large knockbacks. Please check out my guard pointing guide video for more thorough with crucial reasons to why a charged shield is important to maintain. But the basics is that a charge shield throughout the hunt is the absolute priority since it raises your guard skill by plus 2 in terms of knockback, thus making you more defensively and offensively capable with more opportunity to guard point counter successfully. Also within that guide, I'll thoroughly explain how critical both the guard and offensive guard skills are, which are also a must when you're able to fit it in your builds. Okay, back to the benefits of the charged sword. The reason I performed that optional combo at the end is because I had to charge my files up anyway, and that happens to be the same combo to charge your sword with one additional input. To charge your sword, the basic combo is hold RT and tap B, or hold R2 and tap circle to charge your files. Then immediately hold Y or triangle, and when the sword gets sucked into the shield, you release all your buttons and you can control a little of the direction you want to smash your sword down with your left thumbstick. So with the expense of a few frames, I will attempt a charge sword smash onto a target, which is the highest DPS move you can possibly do with the sword, and is the only sword move that is stronger than any of your normal axe hits. The benefits once it's charged slightly differs with impact and elemental charge blades, but similar benefits shared for both CB types, you temporarily gain the mind's eye skill for a limited time for as long as the sword is charged and this allows you to perform any attack on the monster without ever deflecting your weapon and when you've overcharged your files as it's flashing bright red, you'll also be able to strike without any deflections. As a bonus tip, there is a very interesting mechanic when you have both a charged sword and files overcharged. When both these conditions are active and you spam Y, Y, B, Y, Y, B, etc. or triangle, triangle, circle, triangle, triangle, circle repeatedly as fast as you can, you will actually create a bunch of DPS in a short space of time and more so than without these conditions, like this comparison here. When you perform the shield thrust, which is the YB or triangle circle combo after your initial slash, you have the most control in changing your character's direction when including this in whatever combo moveset by holding left or right as you perform it. The additional benefits of a charged sword for impact charge blades is that it adds KO damage to your sword attacks as you strike the monster's head, so make sure you take your time and aim for its head when possible. As with any weapon, KO damage only applies to headshots. You also gain additional mini file damage with each sword strike, and the damage itself is nothing to write home about, but when coupled with the fact it adds to your KO damage, it's great stuff, so aim for the head. With elemental CBs, the charged sword gives you the additional benefit of extra file damage with each strike, and if you're striking a monster part with good elemental hit zone values, your damage output is increased with a good amount with each sword strike, which will contribute to flinching or tripping the monster. Remember, elemental charge blades don't do any KO damage, so the balance or advantage 
is more DPS through files on good hit zone values. For those that don't know about hit zone values, each monster part you hit has a unique hit zone value for each of the 8 damaging types in the game. The higher the hit zone value, the weaker that part is to a type of damage, thus the more damage you will do. The 8 different types of damage you can do in the game include Sever, Blunt, Projectile, and 5 are from each elemental type. Impact CBs will only do sever damage with your sword or predominantly blunt damage with your axe. And elemental CBs will do a combination of those two same physical attacks with the addition of elemental damage if its hit zones are weak to the element you are using. If you have any more questions on this, just ask away in the comments section and I can po point you in the right direction. Next up is how long does each charged state last for? First up, for your charged sword, which can only be activated if you have a charged shield, will last for a total of 45 seconds once activated. This timer will reset every time you perform another charged sword smash. When the charged sword icon in the top left of your screen starts flashing, that's an alert to indicate you have less than 15 seconds before you lose it. Regarding the charged shield, this will last depending on how many files you discharge into the shield, and each file will contribute 30 seconds to the timer. So if you have the magazine decoration equipped, which is the capacity boost skill, it will give you an additional file slot to your default 5 files, thus giving you a total of 6 files. I mention this because this is another mandatory skill I use in practically all my builds and will assume this moving forward for the rest of the guide. When I play SAED style, it will be the equivalent of 20% increased file damage, which is a lot, and for Savage Axe playstyle, it gives me more room to breathe when I want to spin to win or AED counter, primarily to counter how fast the files dissipate in this mode. When you discharge a total of 6 files into your shield, you will hold a charged shield for a total of 3 minutes, which is the maximum time allowed. If you ever discharge more files into your shield when it's already charged, you will simply add that amount of time into your charged shield where the maximum time would always be 3 minutes, or 2 minutes 30 seconds if you don't run capacity boost. Thus capacity boost also gives you 20% increase in maximum charge shield time, which is huge and means more time fighting and less time recharging everything. The strategy in my fights is always maintain a charged shield and when the charged shield icon starts flashing in the top left corner it means you have less than 30 seconds to react. Once it starts flashing my focus regardless of the monster or any point of the fight is how can I start planning to get a maximum 3 minutes recharged into my shield or at least very close. I will rarely ever recharge my shield with anything less than the max. But note, if you recharge your shield with 6 files as your shield just started to flash with let's say 25 seconds left, then you have essentially wasted 25 seconds since you've added 6 files, which is 3 minutes to the timer, and you've exceeded the 3, three minute limit with 3 minutes 25 seconds. If in another scenario, you instead discharged 5 files out of your potential 6, then you've added 2 minutes 30 on top of your remaining 25 seconds, meaning your new timer is now 2 minutes 55 seconds out of a possible 3 minutes, which is efficient if you're acting quickly. The important note to take is don't ever recharge your shield unless it starts flashing, and only ever recharge your shield with the maximum number of files or one less if you're acting immediately. Never anything less than that or else you'll be wasting more time in the fight recharging everything instead of concentrating on getting more damage in. Also whatever you do, try and get your shield recharged before it runs out. Again, check out my guard pointing guide to truly understand why it's important to maintain a charged shield throughout the hunt. Now let's talk about Savage Axe mode which is exclusive to the Iceborne DLC. You can activate your Savage Axe any time once you have charged files, however you would only ever activate it after you have a charged shield, 
Never activate it without a charged shield because that's your priority. Savage Axe mode will only ever deactivate once you consumed or lost all your files. To activate Savage Axe mode, you simply begin to perform an SAD combo and cancel it by pressing left trigger or L2 at the end of the combo. So for example, Y, YB, YB, left trigger. Or for PS4, triangle, triangle circle, triangle circle, L2. Without Savage Axe mode, your files have no timer and will remain charged indefinitely. However, once you've activated your Savage Axe, your files will immediately start a timer of 18 seconds each before a file dissipates one at a time. However, when you recharge your files, it doesn't just add to the timer, it resets the timer of the existing file that had a countdown and adds the new files. So it's unlike the charge shield, when new files recharged into it only adds to the time. When recharging Savage Axe files, it adds to the time and resets the current timer of the file counting down. If you had one file left and it had five seconds left before it dissipates, but you managed to squeeze in three new charged files from a yellow file state, you will then have a total of four files and the timer will restart a new 18 seconds countdown. The same principle applies when you consume a file. For example, when you do an AED and that file's countdown may have had a few seconds before it dissipated, you just saved yourself the lost file with a new timer restarting on the next file. But if you perform an AED as you miss the 18 seconds timer, then it will look like you lost two files for one move. A good habit to have is to start building your new charged files whenever you have two or less files left in the chamber, as a minimum, because the absolute worst thing to happen is to lose all your files and having to reset your Savage Axe mode, which is the most vulnerable maneuver in the Charge Blade moveset and will waste a lot of time because you have to find a safe opportunity to reactivate it, opposed to concentrating on doing more DPS. So don't consume your second last file if you feel the timer may reset anytime soon, and avoid ever losing your Savage Axe mode if you're in an active fight, unless you decide to use an SAD which may be the only viable attack for the potential guard pointing opening. This may be because of your distance between you and the monster, or the slower wind-up animation working in your favor. Let's move on to the decoration skills that impacts charging or maintaining charges. First, let's talk about the focus skill, which I've already mentioned is a mandatory skill in my opinion, unless you are speedrunning and playing to a script. For the purpose of this guide, the focus skill allows you to quickly charge up your files faster with less sword strikes, and your sword strikes are also executed faster which allows your character to react quicker in general. Please see my guard pointing guide for a more thorough explanation with personal testing results to show how mandatory the skill really is since I don't want to repeat myself. The next decoration is the enhancer decoration which enables the power prolonger skill. This skill has a total of three levels and at level one will increase all timers we discussed by 10%. At power prolonger level 2 will increase the timers by 20% and at maximum 3 levels will increase all the timers discussed by 40%. To give you a snapshot of the effects, check out this table and pause the video if you need to. Even though I've just reviewed the power prolonger skill, I want to encourage you guys to avoid ever using this skill because the whole point of this guide is to give you more confidence and the right mindset in how to plan and manage your files, thus should make this entire skill redundant. I only mention this skill because it's part of the subject, and if you're stubborn, well at least you have all the necessary information, but I personally have no bills that would ever use this skill. Okay guys, it's half time and it's time for me to say, if you've enjoyed this content so far, please hit me up with a like. And if you learn anything new and or want to support me making more content like this, then please smash that subscribe button. If you have any questions, feedback, or want to discuss any of the topics we've just covered, then please leave a comment in the section below. Thank you all for the awesome support. Right, 
It's time for the juiciest part of the guide, how to actually manage your files, shield and savage axe mode in a hunt with every possible situation your files can be in for a given scenario. You now have a better understanding of how the charges and timings work, it's time to use that knowledge in practical situations. First off, we'll run through my version of SAED playstyle, which is a lot easier playstyle compared to Savage Axe, especially when it comes to managing files and your shield, since you don't have the pressure of your files being lost due to a timer. During the fight, as usual, your priority should always be to get your files and shield charged up before you start positioning yourself to do any real damage. Then what I typically do with every monster is look for opportunities to possibly follow up with an SAD or try and get my sword charged and start charging my files to red, which then allows me to potentially follow up with a double SAD and not worrying about my sword bouncing due to overcharged files. For example, when an opportunity arises to guard point and SAD, there's a high chance it may end up flinching, tripping or KO which is another great opportunity to follow up with your second SAD. Then start building up your files to get ready for the next opportunity, rinse and repeat. The best times to release your SADs are from well positioned guard points for the extra offensive guard damage or when the monsters tripped or KO'd. And make sure to take your time and aim for the axe of the SAD to hit the head or weak points since most of the time this is a double axe hit plus most of your six files connecting. The SAD axe hits are a huge amount of the potential damage for both impact and elemental CBs, so don't just rely on file damage as your damage output, since if you want this playstyle to be effective opposed to using Savage Axe, then you need as much DPS to connect as possible. If you guard point and feel you may miss a lot of your files on the weak points if you countered SAD'd, then go ahead and do an AED instead, since this this is still a lot of damage and only consumes one file. One AED file damage is always more DPS than one file damage part of an SAD. And keep however many files you have left for the next SAD opportunity. So if you had max files in red state and decided to AED, do not recharge your files back to full after this. It's more effective to either keep countering with an AED or SAD with however many files and then recharge your files to full since you're already in red state. But if you have three or less files remaining, I would consider recharging your files to max unless an immediate opportunity to SAD come up since the more files you're able to throw out and connect, the higher the chance the monster will flinch, trip or KO. This is my general strategy when I play with SAD playstyle and works with all monsters, either solo play or within a team. Now, let's talk about each scenario when your shield starts flashing, since this is an alert to say you have 30 seconds left to get your shield recharged. If you have no files, then prioritize on recharging everything again with the combos discussed earlier. Simple. If you had one to four files remaining, your options are to continue fighting and eventually burn your files with a final SAD. If during this process you are in a colored state, do not recharge your files until you've burnt these files, which only then you will recharge them and discharge them straight to your shield. The reason for this is to maximize your damage output with your current amount of files and don't waste this opportunity by recharging them too early. With 5 files left, you can discharge them straight to your shield if you act straight away or choose to SAD if a good opportunity arises and restart the recharging process. With 6 files, I would just discharge them into your shield but you can choose to counter with an AED if an immediate opportunity arises, then discharge the remaining 5 files into the shield or just go with an SAD if you prefer. The priority in whatever you choose is to try and make sure you don't lose your charged shield. As an added note, I would never use the Savage Axe Spin to Win combo during SAD playstyle since the damage you do without Savage Axe mode activated is just not worth the investment compared to building up and waiting for SAD moments, if this is your chosen playstyle for the hunt. 
When the monster starts to transition areas, my recommendation is to always have the mindset to start the battle in the next area with the best head start, which is fully charged files and ideally in red state. When it starts to transition, do not recharge your shield, only until you begin to enter the next area. If you had the best scenario which is fully charged files and in red state as it transitions, then this immediately positions you to have a charged shield and fully charged files to start your next stage of the fight. If you don't have the maximum number of files to charge it into your shield, I would keep what you have and build back to max files to recharge your shield as you fight the monster again. If you fainted and have remaining files, treat them as you would when the monster transition areas. A good tip is that if a monster transitions areas and there are small monsters on the way to the next area, perhaps spend a little time and build your charge files to red state and recharge everything as you enter the next area. Just always try to start your fight with a fresh, fully charged shield so your focus for the next 3 minutes is purely DPS. Now, it's finally time to run through my general strategy and different scenarios in how to manage your files and shield during Savage Axe mode. This is the most optimum CB playstyle in 95% of the hunts in this game, whether it's playing solo or multiplayer, so it's definitely worth learning. When starting to charge everything and activate Savage Axe mode, a good note to know is that the initial Y or triangle button in the combo which is a stationary slash, can always be replaced with a YB or triangle circle combo if you prefer, which instead starts off with a forward thrusting slash and good if you're chasing your target and want to quickly close the gap between you. So as an alternative, you can activate your Savage Axe mode with the combo YB, 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 left trigger, or for PS4, triangle circle, triangle circle, triangle circle, L2. Now that Savage Axe mode is activated, my playstyle will involve looking and positioning myself for AED guard point counters to ideally hit the head or weak spots. Not every guard point counter is suitable for AED counters, so you need to be selective and the more you know the monster, the better you'll know what attacks or moves are the best with each possible guard point. I may also guard point counter with normal axe hits since this deals a big chunk of damage and is usually the preferred attack if the monster's recovery animation is too quick for AEDs to be safe. Normal Axe Hits also has the added benefit when you immediately transform back to Sword and Shield with Right Trigger or R2. It helps charge your files when and if you connect the round slash with the monster. As I fight and look for strong openings, I would be charging my files to yellow or red so I can recharge them easily as I consume them. Generally speaking, there are a lot more opportunities to look for AED guard point counters compared to SAED guard point counters, so with Savage Axe playstyle, it's more critical you learn the monster's movesets and be able to anticipate their moves with optimum positioning. Check out my guard pointing guide demonstrating all the possible combos and how I practically use each one in my various hunts. When you finally knock the monster down, the best move you can do is your spin to win with your axe, and I'll run through some of the key combos to consider and when to do them. First you need to understand, there are different types of knockdowns in the game, such as trips and KOs, and the timer of how long they stay down for can also be different for each monster and the type of knockdown. Typically, knockdown times can increase as you break the monster's parts and the hunt goes on, but the best finishing move you can aim to go for at the end of your combo are AEDs as the monster gets up because this is the single most strongest axe hit and the monster's hidden trip HP bar is reset as the monster is recovering so you can even force a follow up flinch, trip or KO. Yes, sometimes you may take a small trade for taking this risk but it's absolutely worth it and always feels good when you connect one but the best position to be in is to be in sword and shield mode before the monster has recovered so you can optimally follow up safely with whatever's next and look for guard points to keep your offensive guard proc going. When the monster is down, you typically have three moves to consider as your first attack depending on the amount of fouls you have remaining. 
they are either an immediate sword to axe transformation, charge slash, or charge files straight to spin to win combo. The combos you choose to do while it's down will slightly differ in either solo or multiplayer hunts and will depend on how long you anticipate the monster is down for and how long does it take you to get to the target weak point. Okay, let's start with this scenario. If I had 5 to 6 files in the chamber, regardless what color state my files are in, what would I do? When playing solo, I would consider two generic combos and will adapt them depending on the type of knockdown and how long it takes me to get to the target. I would always start with a sword to axe transformation and immediately pressing B or circle to initiate the spin to win combo. Then continue with an uppercut by pressing Y or triangle followed by B or circle to spin again. And typically from here, I would keep tapping B or circle until it forces an SAD animation and hold down and Y or triangle to finish off with an AD. Just to clarify, when I say knockdowns, this includes trips, KOs, boulder drops, wall bangs and any trap scenario. If I feel or know a particular knockdown is very short or it took me a while to position myself to its head, I would start with a sword to axe transformation and immediately press B or circle to initiate the spin to win combo. Then continue with an uppercut by pressing Y or triangle followed by a downward axe hit by pressing Y or triangle again and then finish off with an AED by pressing YB, hold down and Y. Or for PS4, triangle circle, hold down, triangle. If I was in a multiplayer hunt, there are also two generic combos to consider, and these are adaptations of the ones discussed. And the only reason they differ is because the uppercut move is an anti-multiplayer move, since it launches your teammates away from the monster, and no combo in the game will compensate a loss of another player's weapon combo. This fact applies to any weapon that has a move set that can launch your teammates away. The first combo is for targets with longer knockdowns and you'll start with a sword to axe transformation and immediately press B or circle to initiate the spin to win combo. Then you wait a moment for the animation to finish and hold forward and Y or triangle to initiate the axe dash slam. Then immediately keep spamming B or circle until your character starts an SAD animation and cancel it by performing an AED by holding down and Y or triangle. The second combo is for short knockdowns or if it took you a little while to get to your target where I would start with a sword to axe transformation and immediately press B or circle to initiate the spin to win combo. Then you wait a moment for the animation to finish and hold forward and Y or triangle to initiate the axe dash slam. Then go straight to an AD by pressing YB followed by holding down and Y, or for PS4, press triangle circle, followed by holding down and triangle. If you finish early, then just keep charging your files back up and prepare for the next monster attack. Moving forward in this guide, make sure you understand these generic combos, and of course you will have to adapt these combos for the given situation, but at least you now have a better understanding of the most damaging combos. You may ask, what about using the slinger burst in these combos while it's knocked down? My answer is they are not designed for DPS and should definitely not be used in the middle of these combos for this purpose. They should be saved and used tactically. And this is a bigger subject than you may think. And I'll have a separate video on this since it's incredibly powerful for this reason. The priority once you have activated Savage Axe mode is to never lose this mode, which is mostly done by poorly managing your files and consuming or losing your last file. There's only two practical occasions you would consider losing your Savage Axe mode, where the first is if you find yourself in a position where you've guard pointed and the only possible counter is an SAD, due to reasons explained earlier in this guide. The second we'll cover shortly. It's entirely your call, but if you don't like recharging everything again, then just take the proc and start attacking it normally. Next up, 
If I had three to four white files, I would typically start with a charge slash by holding in B or circle and release to slightly build up my file's charge state to either yellow or red. Then my preference most of the time is to follow up with a sword to axe transformation and continue with whatever spin to win combo. If I had three to four colored files, I typically would go straight into sword to axe transformation and start my spin to win combo with the intention to immediately focus recharging my files as I get out. However, if I feel it's taking me a little longer to get to the target, then I may just recharge my files and start my spin to win combo by holding right trigger and B to recharge my files and keep tapping B to initiate the spin to win combo. And for PS4, let's hold R2 and circle to recharge the files and keep tapping circle to initiate the spin to win combo. The advantage with the charge files to spin to win combo is that you can initiate it quicker. The disadvantage is that it consumes two files. So by the time you finish your combo, you'll pretty much be where you started or less and should focus on getting your files colored again. The advantage of going straight to Sword to Axe is that it's more DPS and when you finish your combo, you may recharge your files to max and all you need to focus on moving forward is getting the strongest counters in. The disadvantage is that you put yourself in a little more pressure of what combos you can use during the spin to win combo since your files are low but if you learn to manage this, it's the most effective in my opinion but you choose what you feel most comfortable with for the given situation. If I had 1-2 to two files, I would focus on recharging my files to ideally red state. Once my files are in red state, I'd go straight from recharging my files to my preferred spin to win combo. As you build experience with the CB, you need to judge for yourself what type of combos are the most efficient, depending how long it takes for you to get to that weak point and how long you think your target will be down for. This is where you start building on your planning and decision making skills to get the most optimum damage whilst maintaining your files charge for future counters. Whenever my shield starts to flash, regardless of the color of my files or however many I have, this would be the second instance where I would look for an SAD opportunity or just do as much damage as I can with my remaining files and finish with an SAD since I have to recharge my shield anyway and the extra damage you would get from the potential double savage axe hit with the SAD is worth the DPS investment, especially if you can SAD guard point counter and proc offensive guard. The idea in this situation is to consume your remaining fouls in terms of damage so you don't waste it since you'll need to recharge everything anyway. As soon as your shield starts flashing, do not recharge your files, whatever color state it gets to. Keep that as your next move to recharge your shield. So to summarize, when your shield flashes, keep doing what you're doing with the intention to burn all your files with a final SAD, and do not recharge your files until this is done. The only exception to this rule is if you had 5-6 to six files remaining, and if you value more in getting charged back to Savage Axe mode, then you may choose to recharge your shield. Whenever you faint or the monster transitions areas, your first thought should be, will I lose my charge if I run back to the monster? If so, then just quickly recharge your shield. If you have enough charge and no risk in losing them, then it's completely up to you, but I would typically just run back in there with my current charges. If my shield starts to flash at the same time, then I would typically just recharge my shield with whatever I got and choose to recharge it again when I get to the monster, or continue back to Savage Axe mode if I charged enough in my shield. Right. We finally got to the conclusion, and thanks to all of you who have stuck with me to the end. I hope in sharing all this advice, you start to build a thought process in what you need to be thinking about for all these given scenarios, and adapt this new thought process to your own playstyle. Moving forward, as you play with the CB, always ask yourself, am I efficiently managing my files? I firmly believe if you had two advanced CB players playing together in numerous hunts and one of them is slightly more skilled than the other in guard pointing, positioning and attacking, 
but the other player is more skilled at managing their files, I believe the person more skilled at managing files will consistently be the more valuable overall damage dealer in their hunts, especially if the hunt takes longer than 7 minutes. To improve your learning ability, I highly recommend watching either any one of your favorite streamers playing Chargeblade or the top Chargeblade speedrunners. Unlike guard pointing, which is a twitch reaction skill, you predominantly only learn this effectively when the skill set is performed optimally, where the best way to learn is really just watching the best Chargeblade speedrunners. However, with managing files, which is more about planning and decision making, you will learn fairly equally from both good practice and bad practice. Now that you have the tools in how to plan and have better file management, when you watch a player, focus on specifically how they are managing their files throughout the hunt and look out for potential mistakes and imagine what would the scenario of their fight be like if they did manage it more effectively. So you have to think a few steps ahead and think what moves could they have done instead and how would that impact their overall damage potential. You will start to realize the significant benefits of why efficient file management is so critical and will take your game to the next level. When watching, the top speedrunners who are looking to make the best decision in every aspect of the hunt with only a split second to react, pay attention to their file management and you may notice they could have done something better since it's very easy to make a slightly wrong decision but because they are so skilled you wouldn't have noticed they made a mistake prior to this guide. You may also rarely notice they use slightly different tactics that actually works out more optimum in that given situation. If so, these are something you may want to make a mental note of. The best moment to pay particular attention is when their shield starts flashing since this is the biggest pressure in the fight for any charge blade player who has to continue planning his guard point counters, positioning, attacks, evasions, sharpness, etc. But with the added task of planning in their heads how to best recharge everything whilst anticipating the monster's move and doing maximum damage. Please do not use this learning technique as a tool to be vocal and criticize any content creator since people play for fun and it's up to them how they want to play. If you want to be a polite ass, then just hint to them to check this guide out. Wink wink. But please do share this guide with as many people you think that will benefit from it. I hope I've achieved my objectives with this guide which is to make everyone considering using the CB, either new or old, to feel more comfortable and confident in picking it up and those seeking to better themselves with the charge blade has seen another aspect for them to focus on improving. Like I said earlier, I'm still working on mastering this technique myself, specifically to make my split second decision making better. At the end of the day, you guys just play how you want and keep having fun with this incredible weapon that is the charge blade. You can use all these techniques to play a hybrid playstyle of both SAD and Savage Axe, which I enjoy playing once in a while when I just want to chill and switch off my brain. Another simple and what may seem an obvious learning technique is whenever you go away and question yourself within your hunt, was that the right thing to do? Make a mental note and refer back to this guide and look for what I would do. As you compare and make reference, you will adapt and improve your own unique playstyle. And of course, use the timestamps in the description to get around easier. Just to remind everyone, I'm a charge blade speedrunner and all of my speedruns since the Safi update are still one of the fastest in the world for my category. So check them out and if you want to be one of the first to criticize my file management, then you have my permission and refer a timestamp please in the comment section of those videos along with your analysis. I really hope I don't regret this, but I think this could be fun. If you can find any potential improvements in any of my videos, make a note of what you think I could have done instead to be more DPS productive. Use this exercise to test how well you can use your vision to see ahead of a potential mistake, where maybe I could have squeezed an AED or two instead of wasting time recharging my files again. I'll provide feedback regardless of what you say as long as it's genuine to further help you learn. So don't be shy since you'll learn better from interacting this way. 
Again, do not do this to any other content creator if they haven't asked for it. And just be patient with my replies since I have a pretty good reputation with getting back to people. I have to give a big shout out to my crew, the Draken Rangers, who has assisted me with most of the longer hunts in this video. We are a large group of friendly and talented Xbox hunters with multiple weapon mains who do speedruns, and each member has soloed Extremis, which is the minimum requirement to join the squad. The team is dedicated to help anyone within the Xbox community, including Extremis, and we've been holding weapon masterclass sessions where you will join the session and the leader will give you advice on builds and playstyles while you hunt together. Regardless of what platform you're on, come join our evolving discord which has lots of resources like uh, Monster Hunter World, Encyclopedia, builds for all the weapons, monster hit zones, etc. If you have any questions about the crew, just leave a comment below and check out the links in the description. Thank you to everyone who has taken their valuable time to watch my content and if you have any questions, feedback or ideas of what new videos you would like to see from me then please share your comments below since I really want to hear from you guys. All of my guides have been inspired by my subscribers comments so it's your ideas which are currently driving the content on my channel. If you want to support my channel and you've enjoyed this content, hit that like button. And if you learn anything new or want to see more videos from me, which I still have a lot of ideas, please smash that subscribe button, which is the best way to support me. I also have a Twitter, which I'm starting to grow, and a donations link in my about me section if you really want to support me. Well, please share any of my guides to anyone you think will benefit from. And thank you all so much. It's time, guys. Happy hunting!